All right. And then today he played a grand masterpiece. And I won't make my usual joke because Karen's right here. So I got to watch it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Karen's next to the microphone and I'm not, but I speak slightly louder than her. Wait, slightly. what are they saying? They said speak louder. Oh. She's next to the microphone and I'm like an hour away from it. But That's why we put it over there. Yeah, you're allowed to agree to a, a draw in the club. You're allowed to agree to a draw anywhere. It's a USS in, rule. In this tournament, you have to play 30 moves before you can agree to a draw, mm -hmm. but you can have a repetition draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, money does buy happiness if you know where to shop. That's correct. I think the most famous saying refuting money doesn't buy happiness when people say that, mm -hmm. is money doesn't buy happiness, but you can choose your misery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try harder, Homer. Yeah. Do you like Coca-Cola? I do. I haven't had soda since before you guys were born. I try not to drink it, but I do like it. Yeah. <laughs> Not only does she like Coke, she can rank what kind of Coke she likes. On a bottle, in a plastic bottle, a glass bottle, plastic bottle, can, and fountain, she already knows, like, she already got them ranked. That is, that is the ranking. Yeah, and, well, I, I just randomly said them, too. And she does not like, pause for effect, Mexican Coke. She hates that. Terrible. She's like, what, what do they do that for? And a lot of people That's I know like true. it better. That's not even true. Like it better. I like, um, I like it. I'm just saying that I uh, prefer the other better. Mm -hmm. And you know what she really loves? Mm -hmm. I don't. Pepsi. I was about to say I don't like Pepsi. That's yeah, what you're I thinking know. of. Yeah. So Obviously, yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like the fountain Coke because 50-50, the carbonation's off, right? It's not It's not right. It's too dark or it's too, it's not right. They didn't do it right. You don't like Mexican beer. Mexican beer's great. Boo. <laughs> Vanilla Coke. Hey, I'm so hungry. But you're never hungry. Like, even when she's hungry, she's not hungry. No, she takes a bite and she's not hungry I got, anymore. Today I got hungry. Here's what's going to happen at Cheesecake Factory. I didn't eat here, here, here's what's going to happen. Yes. You'll be like, oh, rawr, I'm hungry. Then you're going to order food. Then they're going to bring the bread. And, they're gonna fill up and then the you're going to eat bread and be like, ah, I'm not hungry. Before the food comes. I've done that my whole life. Yeah. I know Karen. That's what's going to happen. Uh, no, no, we're going to Cheesecake Factory. Is Spencer going? Did he answer? Um, I never saw if he answered. Uh, let's see here. Maybe he didn't even hear me. He didn't hear you. Uh, maybe. What's Spencer's name? Spencer. Coming to Cheesecake Factory with us. Damn it. Now I'm just hungry. I was at Cheesecake Factory once. The I waitress dropped her hot tea on a customer, and they had to call 911. I thought you were going to say that she caused 911. No. Oh. <laughs> Competition's great. There's bad players, there's good players, etc. See, that is funny. The Cheesecake Factory might takes longer to get through than a Dvoretsky book. That is funny. <laughs> yeah. Will you ever find love? Probably. They do not have vegan cheesecake. You can't go. No. You can never go? Like, what if we go when you want to go? Can you go then? I, you know, I'm hungry. She, she's not hungry. <laughs> Colombian Coke. That's the best Coke. <clears throat> All right. So here's the, the game that was played today. Today. So you got to talk to, like, whoever works for us and get this shit up. This is played today. Okay. you got to make five videos. This one and then each individual. Well, Actually, I don't know if you should make a video about this game. Probably not. Ridiculous. Let me make you know sure yeah. that okay. our editor is working. So this is this was this was played before by Duda and by Karyakin. In sep in this tournament, they got this position. Okay, so yeah. Like they both had this position in the tournament already. Now somebody geniusly geniusly point that can't be a word, right? Pointed out that this, are you ready? Are you sitting down? Mm -hmm. I'm going to prove it too. This is a C3 Sicilian in reverse, this position. And I was like, oh yeah, it is. I never would have thought of that. 
But it is. It's a line that I play with black. Although I put my bishop here, this is popular too, and I put my queen here. Okay, so you watching? Mm -hmm. Okay, so C3 Sicilian. All right, now in this position, black can play with bishop G4 or without bishop G4, okay? And most people play E6, but I play bishop G4, the Icelandic variation. That's your favorite, right? Okay, here, castles, here, uh, here, H3, here, bishop E3, takes, takes. I play this, okay? But we can imagine, let's play this, just, I don't know why. And then here, and then here. This is their position. So basically, um, black is playing the C3 Sicilian down a tempo. Black has this position down a tempo. So here it's white's move. But in the game, the Karyakin game, it's, it's black's move. So you already go here. And it makes sense to me. That, you know, that seems reasonable. It's a total transposition from another opening. It's weird, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's strange. Okay. Um, okay, so queen b6. And this has happened before in the tournament. This move, bishop f6, is a novelty. It's a prepared novelty. It's never been played, probably. The engine just gives it and says that's the best move. So I'm sure he engined this position because he had it before. And he just took a pawn. Now, for reasons I'll never understand... A lot of times during the game on Twitter, chess.com or chess24 or FIDE or something shows a position and says something about it. Usually when they say something about it, it's not right. Here they said, Duda has won a pawn. Will that be enough to win the game? Duda's won a pawn until Black played there. Like he took a pawn and then Karyakin took it back. Good analysis by whoever tweeted that. I think it was Chess24, but I'm going to have been feed HS. It wasn't Chess.com. But I'm like, what, what? what? He didn't win a pawn. He took a pawn here, and they lost that one. Okay. Now, King E2 is a weird move. It, it may or may not be better than Castles. But that's not what I want to talk about. Most people incorrectly think that Black has a queenside majority, which they do, and White has the kingside majority, so black's better because in the end game, black can get a passed pawn. And that on the king's side, you're not getting a passed pawn because your kings are there. It's actually wrong. Nobody's getting a passed pawn because black's pawns haven't moved yet. If black's pawns were on like a5 and b4, all right. So what's more important is king safety. To you, the kings are equally safe, which is wrong because chess is too hard for everybody. Well, not these guys. White's better because white has an E pawn. White's king is safer. White's king is so much safer than black's, he can play king E2 and his king is still safe. And the reason he did that was he thought in the next five or 10 moves, they would trade queens. Doesn't want his king on G1. Now, obviously, if your king's on E2 in the middle game, you can get your ass kicked. What's black, what's black gonna do about it? So white doesn't stand on ceremony. White thinks king E2 is the best move. He doesn't say, well, my king will get mated on e2. It won't. Black has nothing to attack it with. Nothing. Black can never attack white's king. So he thought, I'll move my rook out wherever I move it. And if we trade queens, why would I want my king here when it could be here? He's right. That's why he played king e2. It's a very bold decision because it's weird. You're like, I'm not playing king e2. What am, what's wrong with me? But he's like, yeah, whatever. Okay, bishop f6, always retreat. Doubled up on the bubble up. Yeah, and this is just better for white because white can attack black's king. White dominates the d-file. White can threaten to mess up black's pawns, and black can't do anything. Black just chills. It should be a draw, like if two supercomputers are playing, but white's better. Unfortunately for Karyakin, Duda was on fire. Now, when you see this pawn structure, this is actually instructive. I apologize. This is like serious now. Right? Don't forget what I'm going to say now. When you see this pawn structure, when you have these opposite bishops, which is 50-50, mm -hmm. okay, much better for white because you got this action going on and this has nothing going on. If this bishop was here, then who cares? But this bishop here, you're going to see who cares. It's going to be black cares. Like, damn it. If black had this pawn here, black's fine. 
But because there's a white squared bishop and there's no e pawn and there's no dark, there's no white squared bishop for black, black is in trouble. And so here, always retreat because that's going to be really annoying. That's not good. And this bishop is not, can't do anything. Nothing. That bishop, that it's just sitting there. It can never attack anything and I can kick it away, which he did. Terrible. Now I can trade queens and my king on e2 is fine. And this is forever. Rook's coming to d7. And what's black doing? Nothing, that's what. And for further information on everything I just said, look at the famous game. It's famous for Karen, not for you guys. Car Carlson Feingold. In the opening, Carlson played king d1. Danny Wrench had a heart attack and said Magnus is losing. He fell into an opening trap because, you know, chess isn't really Danny's game. You know? Danny makes jokes. Okay. And then as the game went on, we traded queens. My king was in trouble. His wasn't. And then I lost. Otherwise, I would have won for sure. But, you know, tough. Rat King Ravi 2 subscribed. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, Fide stream was a train wreck, obviously. Also, where where's my other train? This is terrible. Okay. He played queen b4, which is not good. He didn't play well this game. Uh, Karyakin. Now, white played an amazing move. It's the engine move, but it's amazing. Right? Nobody would play this move but Duda. Maybe Carlson would. Is, is he his position? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he played queen b3. That's That's the best move. You don't want to take the queen. Oh, they do want to trade queens, but you don't want to do it here. You, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying, mm -hmm. right? Now black's winning. So I guess queen b3 is sort of obvious because you have to, I mean, it's like the only move. Yeah. But it's great. The black can't do anything. Okay, taking queens is wrong. Bishop takes is correct. Yeah, and black can't move here. It's like the federal, yeah, rook's coming to d7 and... And, and G4, G5 is coming? I mean, this is like... Um, I forgot what his name is. Is it Octopus Man? And Rick and Morty, who's the... Who's the guy for... He just starts killing people. And he has a driver that looks like a monster. What, what's his name? It's not Octopus Man. No, 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 not this season. No, it's not Crumbopulous Michael, but that was good. Right it's not Nimbus. It's not from this season. It's from like Interdimensional Cable. They're watching a show. No, not Birdman. No, not Shrimply Pibbles. Shrimply Pibbles isn't killing anybody. Can you bring me a parry when you get back? Man, you're just naming random characters from the show. It is Octopus Man? It is? Yeah. Yeah, because cause troubles are coming, matey. Yeah. No, he's in the he's in the he's in Rick and Morty for 20 seconds. So in the five seasons of the show, this guy's in it for 20 seconds. <laughs> he's like he's like a superhero, but he kills people. That's it's like a knife. Um Yeah. Was it Octopus Man? Where's Spencer? He's the only one who I can trust. I can't trust anybody else. Yeah. Anyway, the, the reason I said it was he's in for trouble, matey. And trouble's a-coming. Yeah. All right. Not Scary Terry, but he's a character, too. Scary Terry's in it for, like, you know, a minute. Not for 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Terrible. How could you not have watched every episode? No, I haven't seen that. I try not to watch Elon Musk. My IQ is already low enough. Da, da, da. Elon Musk is like a better version of Trump. He's an idiot, super rich, not as dumb. He made money instead of given, being given to him by, uh, you know, whatever. I'm going to tell your guy. I'm going to tell one of your boyfriends. Hey, you know, you better watch it. Yeah, can it, yeah, parry it. Uh -huh. If you saw what Karen was doing, Karen must think it's Halloween. Well, yeah, the old guys. 
there's a song by Duran Duran, but Karen misheard the title. What song was that? <laughs> it was Hungry Like the Wife. No. I'm on the hunt. It's Octopus Man? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he stabs random people, right? I'm eating the senior club snacks. Who is this lady? Well, you're a senior. Yeah. I am. I'm entitled to eat them. <laughs> There's only one good thing about Elon Musk. One. He was on Rick and Morty. And his character's name was Elon Tusk. He had, he had a Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, Elon Tusk. All right. Now, uh, Karen's not allowed to look at the next move because if Karen played this move, I would be mad at her because this is the kind of move Karen makes. However, Karyakin played it and the engine says it's the best move. It's like Karen shouldn't look at this. This will reinforce her passivity. I'm so white wants to go here mm -hmm. and then white's winning. He got everything. But he stopped it. He made this not possible. Mm, C7. No, I can still go there. Yeah. I, got another, I got two rooks, one for each of you. Mm. Defend it with something else. Probably not the dark squared bishop, because that's yeah, a white square. Mm -hmm. um, it's the most passive move in the history of chess. I mean, knight B8. That's, That's what he played. Oh. Yeah. Well, he didn't want to allow that. Yeah. Yeah. The engine says knight B, it's right. Okay. Yeah, Karyaka is the minister of defense. Okay, now again, this pawn majority is irrelevant. It's not, that, you know. Okay, now white's like, this is great, this is great, this is great, this is great. These are all in the back rank. Let's push him around a little bit. G4. After I go here, you have to retreat again. Now, the bishop's on this diagonal. And the only thing it's good for is it stops knight e5. Okay. Also, it's good at scaring children away. You know why? Mm -mm. It's a bishop. Mm. Okay. Now, if my knight goes here, then, I, you know, come on, are you kidding me? Right? I got everything. So you want to keep your bishop on this diagonal. So he put it in H, and then Duda put it in H. And then he's like, I need a square for my bishop. Okay. By the way, the engine thought H5 was a little better, because if white, if black plays G5, it wanted this square for his rook. They're both winning, so it doesn't matter. Now, here I was surprised he played here. I was surprised he didn't stay on this diagonal. One of the problems is... Um, for black, bishop e7 stops rook d6, and rook d6 threatens the g-pawn. But I still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play here. I don't like that move. I don't like letting I come in here. So the engine says this is the second best move. It's probably going to say it's the best move soon. Okay, I'm not a fan of that move, but the engine says it doesn't matter. Okay. Rook e5 attacking the bishop, because I said so. Knight c6. And now... You remember I say always sack the exchange, and then Magnus always sack the exchange and won both games. Mm -hmm. And then the best move here is to sack the exchange. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to find because it looks like if you don't sack the exchange, you should win, which I agree with. So you can play rookie four. But then white's barely winning. Instead, he always sack the exchange because the knight was defending d7, and now it's not. Okay? And if you take that rook, then you will know... My name is the Lord. Every, everything's attacked. I've never seen so many things attacked. And I'm old. Like, if I take this, okay, it's a domino effect, right? I'm attacking your rook. So let me give you a variation. That's the engine move here. If you don't move your rook, I can take your rook. If you move your rook, then this is hanging. And you might get mated. God damn. Yeah, in fact, this is an engine move moving the rook. It's like that doesn't exist. <clears throat> this obviously is ridiculous because I can play bishop f7 check and win your rook. But let's go here. Let's see if there's mate. Man, that's that's annoying, right? 
Always sack the exchange. If white doesn't mate black, then white's got two connected past pawns. So white's threatening everything. Every move wins for white. If you move this rook anywhere, right here, 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 it's mate. Okay, so the engine says black resigns. That's the engine move. Here's the engine line, check. If you take it, you lose your rook, so here. Rook here, it's not mate because you can sack your rook for the bishop. Okay, and then black resigns. Worst position ever. Now, if I was black and it was my move, I would sneak these pieces off the board, then it's stalemate. And then Nigel would still tell me I lost because he's defeating him. Damn. Okay. So he sacked the exchange, and Karyakin said, I don't want that, which the engine agrees with, I don't want that. And he's like, okay. So that night, that night B8, that didn't help out. The rook still got there. Yeah. And again, it's like Magnus's game. Like, black can't move. Dude is too good. Knight a5, very bad move. Now, white has a very simple winning tactic here. And I actually don't know if he saw it and thought his move was better or he didn't see it. I don't know. We have to lean towards he saw it but thought his move was better. Because if he didn't see it, that's weird. Like, if neither player saw it, that's strange. Possible, because they're tired. Very simple tactic. Very simple. I, I, in, in Puzzle Rush, this is like one of the easier ones. You, you take the bishop, mm -hmm. and then the knight's hanging. Right. Yeah. So you get two pieces for a rook, and white's totally winning, like plus four, plus five. It could be he saw that, and he's like, oh, I like what I'm doing better. It could be. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm not giving those pieces away. He said he didn't see it. Oh, he said he didn't see it? Okay. Yeah, a lot of times they lie. Like certain people would say, like, yeah, I saw that, but this is better. Then they move their eyes back and forth. Dude is not going to do that. Now, if Judah missed it, I'm guessing mm -hmm. the Karyakin missed it. Now, Karyakin's the minister of defense, and he plays knight a5, losing immediately. That's not good defense. And probably when you're Judah, you don't expect Karyakin to make a one-move blunder and resign, because that's not his specialty. If Judah was playing me, he'd be like, oh, knight a5, what does that lose? Fine gold. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, bishop d5. God damn. I mean, he, what's going on here? Okay. Rook c7, which is also bad. All right. Now, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, you sure? This is a tactical blunder also. So this wasn't Karyakin's day. Are you sure you're ready? Bam! First played in what game? Gotcha. Versus? Bitch. Correct. <laughs> okay, now, this move undefends the knight because I said so, but the, the rook is hanging. And if you trade rooks, then the bishop defends the knight. However, this move undefends the bishop. So the bishop's defended by the rook, you agree, and it's defending this, overworked. Now, not only do these tactics work for white, at some point, this knight's just hanging. So black, and, and you just lost this pawn, this, you know, no good. Okay, king g7, let's see what happens if he takes this, shall we? We take with check, so we've won a pawn, but more importantly, when you get out of check, I'm taking your knight. You don't have any, you don't have any, yeah, you got nothing. And for the gawking rabble out there who think rook c2 check wins the knight because the rook attacks the knight and the rook attacks the king, white can play either rook d2 or knight d2. So it does it, nothing. So he didn't take, he played here. That's the correct move, right? Now everything is hanging. Chess is hard, right? Okay, so he played the simplest way. Trade rooks. Back to d5. And black has a good position except for one thing. Black can't move. So here, black's down a pawn. This pawn's weak. This pawn's weak. You can't move the knight because your B pawn's hanging. Past E pawn. The engine says plus three. And Karyakin's like, all right, never mind. I give up. Now, you should never give up for, you know, lower rated players. Never. But Karyakin and Duda, white's always going to win this because black can't do anything and black's down material. And black's going to lose more material. Now king e2 looks pretty good. See, he defends the knight. King's perfectly safe. He pushed his pawns here. 
That would make his king unsafe if his king was there. Yeah. I mean, Judah. I mean, I, I think the engine's gonna actually. I think it's gonna it's gonna praise Judah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know how I know that? I mean, I'm lying, thinking it's gonna praise. I already know what it is. You know why? No. I talked to Fat Boy Slim. <laughs> 